This is Dr. Tim Clinton. Thank you for tuning in today for this edition of Family Talk. Every day we strive to bring you programs that will help strengthen your family. And to do this, we need your help. We need your prayers. And we also need your financial contributions. You know that Dr. Dobson has been fighting for the family for over 40 years now. And he's not about to stop, believe you me. Here's Roger Marsh with more information on how you can support the ministry of Family Talk. And friend, thanks to generous listeners like you, Family Talk can reach more and more listeners with practical help and encouragement. To support Family Talk with your best gift, go online to drjamesdobson.org or call 877-732-6825. Today on Family Talk. When meditating on God's goodness, King David wrote, How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. Today's guest here on Family Talk echoed that same awe in understanding God's love for us. Her name is Jenny Christensen. She has a moving testimony of coming to know Jesus after immigrating from Holland in 1919. Jenny passed away many years ago but her deep love for Jesus is still encouraging for us today. Normally, before we start one of our regular broadcasts, we share a little biographical information about our guest. However, Jenny begins by providing you with her background, so we'll allow her to tell you her story. With that said, let's listen now to Jenny Christensen on this special edition of Family Talk. And when I was one year old, my father lost everything in a flood. He was a farmer. And I had five brothers and one sister at that time. And my dad had enough money to send two boys to America. Then they said, we're going to send you the money, and you come to America when we have enough to come for you. And in the meantime, I had gotten another sister. And in 1919, we were ready to go, and I was going to marry a millionaire. And then one day, my brother says to me, would you like to go to a dance? I says, I would love it. He took me to a dance, and in the doorway stood a young man. He bowed, that's usually the way they did it those days. He bowed, and I danced with him. But you see, he was from Denmark. He spoke Danish. So there we were. We couldn't understand each other, but we laughed and we had a good time, and we danced. Well, I said to my brother, I think this guy wants to take me home. He says, oh, he looks innocent enough. So he took me home, and we had many nice dates together. I don't know what we were talking about. <laughs> But when you are in love, you don't need to speak. And you know, we went to a lot of those uh, ice cream parlors, and the only thing I could say in English was banana split. <laughs> so we had lots of banana splits. Well, it was wonderful. We had a great time, but my father didn't like it. He thought the only good people came from Holland. And uh, I didn't like those Holland fellas he had there for me. He had three nice old bachelors. <laughs> and I didn't want any of them. I wanted this Dane. And it went on and on. And finally, I thought to settle it. So we ran away and got married. And that the Holland people didn't do either. This was terrible. But we were very happy. And the first year, I had a baby girl. The second year, I had a baby boy. And the third year, I had a baby boy. And I thought, boy, if this keeps on, <laughs> I'll have a great big family. <laughs> well, you know, those days, you had no babysitters. So I was home with three babies, and my husband was out. And he thought if he would play cards and win some money, I, he could get me a beautiful home in a hurry. Well, it got such a hold of him that it became gambling. And before you knew it, I hardly saw a paycheck. And from cards, it went to horses. And I had a real gambler on my hand. And it was miserable. 
And I couldn't ask my people for help because, you see, everything was my own fault. You ran away and got married. Don't come to us for help. You didn't listen. Now make your bed and you lay in it. That's all there is to it. Don't come to us. And I say to the parents who have wayward children, don't shut the door. I know everything was my own fault. But oh, it hurts when you hear that. I tell you, just love them and leave the door open. So then, there we were. I thought to myself, I'm going to end this. Tonight, I'm going to put the gas on. I thought that was the easiest way out. I thought hell and heaven was right here on earth, and all the rich people in heaven, and all the poor in hell. And a voice came in that room. A voice. I wasn't thinking it. I heard it. And the voice said, no, you won't take those children with you if you do this. They go one place, and you go another. I wasn't thinking it. I heard it. And I says, what's that? If you do this, they will go one place, and you will go another. And I got hysterical, because the voice was so clear. It has never left me. I walked from that stove to a picture on the wall of my husband's parents, just a small picture. And I says, how can you beautiful-looking people have such a rotten son? <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to find out in two weeks if there is two places. I didn't know where to go, but I'm going to give this two weeks. And if I don't find this out in two weeks, I'm going to go through with it. Nothing will stop me. Well, the first week, nothing happened. But the first Monday of the second week, 5 o'clock, I looked through the curtains to see how crabby my husband looked. <laughs> I looked through those curtains, and he smiled. And I thought, my goodness, maybe he got a promotion. He came by that kitchen door, and he says, I met the most interesting man today. He told me that Jesus is coming again. I says, you're crazy. <laughs> they crucified him 2,000 years ago. <laughs> yes, he says, but he's coming again. He says, have you got a Bible? I says, a what? <laughs> a Bible. I says, yes, we do have a Bible. Years ago, an old lady gave me a Bible, and she says, read this. A lot of people get comfort out of it. But I found it, and I give that to my husband, and he says, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you that Jesus is coming again. And he went to that beautiful verse in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am, that ye may be also. He says, do you see that? I will come again. I says, that's a beautiful verse. I, I've never seen that before. He says, let's hurry up and eat. We ate. And otherwise, he would go out, but not that night. He took that Bible and sat in a chair and was reading it. Now and then, he would look up to me, and he said, this is beautiful. This is fantastic. And I thought, my goodness. Well, I watched him. I was glad to see him sit there instead of going out. But that's, he never talked. He was just reading. Finally, I said, you better go to bed, you know, because you got to get up 4 in the morning to go away to that south side job. He says, you go to bed. He says, don't worry about me. I'll get up at 4. Just you go to bed. Well, I lay there a long time, and it was so quiet. And I thought, the rascal has snuck out. <laughs> <laughs> so I got up and peeked through the door. No, he was still sitting there. 
I says, you got to go to bed. You got to get up at four. He says, don't worry. I went back to bed, and I lay there a little while longer, and I thought, this is ridiculous. He'll never get up at four. So I was going to storm through that door, and there I saw a sight which I had never seen before. He was kneeling by the big chair, tears streaming down his face, praying, make me a better father, make me a better husband, and oh Lord, give me wisdom. I couldn't say nothing, and I went back to bed, and pretty soon he came, tears still going down his face. Now four o'clock in the morning, he disappeared, and five o'clock, I peeked through the curtains to see how he looked. And his smile was bigger than ever, waving at me. And I thought, boy, he's been by that man again. And there, the same thing. We had our little supper, and he sits there with the Bible. That three nights. And I thought, my goodness, is that all he's going to do now? Sit here every night reading that Bible? So I threw a shoe at him. <laughs> I thought I would get it right back, but he put it nice next to him and was waiting for the other one. <laughs> but I didn't dare. And then I thought, how foolish of me. Before, I never did anything. And now when I see him sit here every night, now I throw a shoe at him. <laughs> I started to look foolish. And then the devil got after me. You see, the devil never bothered me before because she already had me. But the devil says to me, you ask your husband where Cain got his wife from. Just imagine me worrying about Cain. I never give Cain a thought in all my life. But all of a sudden, I had to know where he got his wife from. There were only two people, and they had two sons, and one killed the other. Where did Cain get his wife? He says, I don't know, but I'll ask this man. So he came home, 5 o'clock, and he told me, you know, Adam and Eve had more children. I never knew it. I never even give it a thought. And years later, he married a sister. Yeah, that's pretty good. But I said, I got another one for you. I was terrible. I wanted to know how Jonah could breathe in the belly of the big fish. Imagine me worrying about Jonah. <laughs> well, he says, I don't know. I'll ask that man tomorrow. And you know, this man told my husband what a great God we had the God who created this whole universe. Everything in it, everything around it. He made God so big. And in the book of Job, we read that he cut the rivers out of rocks. And his eyes see every little thing. It was so easy for God to create a fish to take care of Jonah. Well, you know, I was thinking this over, and this man knew with the questions my husband came to him that I was in big trouble. And he says, why don't you give your wife this tract and tell her to read it? So I cleaned up my little apartment, and 10 o'clock in the morning, I sat in that same chair, and I thought, maybe this will help me sitting in the same spot. And I read that little piece of paper, and it had John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, every nationality, black or white, it doesn't make any difference. Put your own name there. So I did. For God so loved Jenny that Jenny who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I saw it just like that. And I went by that big chair on my knees. 
We have reached the midpoint of Jenny Christensen's presentation here on Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh, and did you know that we are now part of the Dobson Family Institute? We are expanding on Dr. James Dobson's original passion to fight for marriages and families. In addition to these radio broadcasts, we have a public policy center, educational partnerships, and the Dobson Digital Library. Learn more about each of these areas by visiting dobsonfamilyinstitute.com. Okay, let's get back now to the remainder of today's program here on Family Talk. I could hardly wait till 5 o'clock came around. I peeked through the curtains to see how my husband looked because his smile got bigger every day. He waved at me and I waved back. And when he came by that kitchen door, I threw my arms around him and I said, I got it too. (laughs) And we had a wonderful time. We were so happy. Well, he says, this man wants to see you next Saturday. He's going to come over. I says, wonderful. i like to meet him, too. Two o'clock in the afternoon that Saturday, he came. So we sat down, and we studied that word of God from 2 o'clock till 2 that night. This man was so wonderful, he came every Saturday for years to our home. I says, this is too good for just my husband and I. Nobody in Chicago knows this. I says, why don't we start invite some people? He says, well, there is a man at work. He seems to be interesting. Can I bring him? I says, bring him. So he brought this man that Saturday, and that man got saved in my home. He says, can I bring my wife next week? Sure, bring your wife. The wife got saved. They had a sister and a brother living upstairs, and they brought them the following week. I got up to 56 people in my home, and they all got saved. And we had a glorious time. And we loved every one of them. Because isn't that how it goes when you belong to the Lord? You're one big family. We were very happy in the Lord. Well, I have to close with a little story what happened to us, and that has become very famous. You see, this man taught us Christian stewardship, tithing, and restitution. And my husband said, being, having been a gambler, he owed a lot of people money. And he says, I have to pay back every Tom, Dick, and Harry because, he says, I can never give my testimony on a street corner, mission, or church because somebody in the audience may be there sitting and I owe money to. So he says, I have to pay back every Tom, Dick, and Harry. And there were a lot of them. How are we going to do it? I says, oh, we have to eat cheap. (laughs) So we started with vegetable soup. But you know, that was too expensive. It had to become pea soup. And believe me, people, that's the cheapest soup. I've tried every one. And on Sundays, we had a piece of sausage in it. Well, there we were, eating pea soup and pea soup. My husband and I were very happy in the Lord. We weren't even hungry. But you see, those children didn't understand what had happened. One Sunday, we took the children to church, of course. And when we came walking home from church to have our pea soup, an old lady stands on a street corner, very poorly dressed in an old shopping bag. And she reached in there, and she took a tract out, and she gave it to me. And I put it in my coat pocket, and when I came home, I put it by the sink. Well, we had our pea soup. My little girl says, I'm going to go downstairs a minute, Mother, and talk to Dorothy. That was the little girl downstairs. And I'll be right back up again and help you with the dishes. I said, okay, but I guess I was a nosy mother. So I peeked over the railing of the steps what those two were talking about. And this girl said to mine, I'm so full. 
I had a whole spring chicken all to myself. My little girl looked up at me, her eyes this big, full of tears. I said, oh God. And I walked in the house and I knew she would come quickly in there. And I walked to the sink and when she came through the door, she says, mother, I don't understand it. Every time I talk to Dorothy about Jesus, she laughs at me. And she had a whole spring chicken. And I can't eat that pea soup anymore. I just can't. And I says, oh, God. And I turned around, and there was that piece of paper. And it was from the book of James. And it says, because you ask not, you have not. You know, I says, we have never asked God for anything. All we have done is thank him that we're on our way to heaven instead of hell. I says, I didn't even know we could ask for anything. So I says, believe me, honey, here it says, because you ask not, you have not. We're going to ask God for a chicken for next Sunday. She says, Mother, you think we'll get it? I says, it says that here, God is real. He does not lie. And this is in the book of James. You know, I says, we're going to pray all week, honey. Don't tell Daddy and the boys this is going to be a real surprise. He says, okay. Believe me, people, in that week, I was more on my knees than I was walking. Every time I was alone, I was pleading God for a chicken. I says, all I want this girl to know that you are real. Saturday came along, 2.30 in the afternoon. My husband came up to me with his hand like that. It was a quarter, and he says, look, here's two bits. I'm going to get the sausage for the pea soup tomorrow. And I didn't want that quarter to be wasted on sausage. My little girl sat across from me, and her eyes says, see, here he's going to go. You know, since then, I have found out that God is never early. <laughs> <laughs> and he's never late, but he's always on time. And I says, God, do something. My doorbell rang. And I knew there had to be the chicken. <laughs> I flew down those stairs so fast. I had an old wooden door. I had no window in it. And I opened that door, and there stood my old bachelor brother, like this. Three big bustle baskets full of vegetables hanging all over. I hadn't prayed for vegetables. <laughs> He said, surprise. I said, surprise, nothing. There's the chicken. <laughs> he says, how do you know I have a chicken? I says, I prayed for one all week. He says, it's in that middle basket. And I went to the bottom, and I got that chicken, and I let my brother stand by the door, and I ran up the stairs with that chicken, and I threw it in my little girl's lap. <laughs> she says, oh, mother, God is real, isn't he? I says, yes, honey, God is real. And three weeks later, my little girl walked down Moody Church Isle and accepted Jesus as her savior. And some time later, I met Paul W. Root outside of the Moody Bible Institute. I told everybody about that chicken. <laughs> and he met me, and he says, Jenny, are you still praying for chickens? I says, no, I'm getting turkeys now. <laughs> I found the answer, and I learned to pray. But I didn't ask for riches. But he's given me wealth untold. He's given me the moon, the stars, and peace within my heart. It's the only place you can get peace. With Jesus as my Savior, God is my Father. 
and heaven is my home. Wow, what incredible words from today's guest here on Family Talk. Her name, Jenny Christensen. We hope her testimony encouraged you and made you appreciate God's love for each of us. Our joy and deep contentment with life can only be found in a genuine relationship with God. We hope in the midst of this school year that you are still able to listen to Family Talk. If you can't catch up with us on the radio, be sure to download our app and listen at your leisure. Visit your app store or marketplace and search for the Family Talk app. You can listen to our daily broadcast or scroll through any of our past interviews. Download the Family Talk app today where apps are sold. I'm Roger Marsh. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to join us again tomorrow as we remember the lives lost 17 years ago on September 11, 2001 through a special broadcast that's coming up next time right here on Family Talk. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.